Hi everyone, it's Ollie from Magic Hands Hobbies. Welcome back. It's been a while. I hope everyone's had a good Christmas and a good New Year. Um, we will be looking at the continuing saga of the Blood Angels. This is actually a commission for uh, one of my uh, my friends. Further to the um, Blood Marines lieutenant that I did in a previous video, which I will post above. Um, we're looking at the standard Marines. I've painted them to the same base configuration that I had with the Lieutenant uh, using my airbrush um, which you can see that process in my previous video and the idea is that I have now varnished them they've got a bit more red in the color but I have varnished them and I am taking one of each uh, unit type up to its finished level and the intention is that my colleague's uh, son will be able to watch this video and my other videos in the series and follow on with the tutorial to paint. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking the black liner which I'm using the Null Oil from Citadel uh, colour and we are following in all of the cracks and crevices. You saw me looking at the, the brush types, now it is quite important to choose the right brush for the right line that you're trying to achieve. There's no point going in with a, a size two or three brush if you can only fit a one or even a zero into there. So be careful with what brush you want to choose. Um, keep a wet brush on standby because if you make any mistakes you'll need to quickly remove it because uh, it's a lot easier to do it then than it is to try and remove it later or paint over it. So literally going around all of the recesses, all of the cracks and crevices, and uh, helping to outline the overall the overall model. Now here I am painting the Aquila on the chest with a grey. The idea is we're going to shade that later and potentially put some highlights on it. I'm trying to keep the paint job as simple as possible. I'm painting the, the um, Aquila on his shoulder pad here but I have a feeling I actually go back and change this for gold uh, to match the box artwork. I'm not really that much of a buff when it comes to Space Marines. I don't know the the lore and things behind it, but um, yeah, uh, just adding on some gray to pick up the highlights. Also going to use the same grey on the belt. This will give a different effect rather than using black or brown as standard. I'm going to use the grey and then wash it out later. Painting up the knee pad, notice that was black and then also going in for all the under armour um, in all the joints. Be really careful with this. Usually I would sub-assemble these, um, it would make things a lot easier, but you know you can, as long as you take your time and you're careful with it and use the right size brush, you can just get into those little little cracks and areas. Um, just try not to get it onto the paintwork again. Just sit with a wet brush, spare wet brush by the side of you, just in case you do make a mistake and then you can quickly wash that off the areas. Painting up the shoulder pads or pauldrons in black. It was a bit annoying because I hadn't realised this until after I'd done the lining around it that the shoulder pads are supposed to be black. But still, just go in there, fill in the areas, just trying to be careful not to get into the regions that I'd already coated. So having had the black on the knee pad um, as a base, I've now put the blue. Um, if I'd gone on to the red directly with the blue, it probably wouldn't have looked so good, so I needed to get a base down there. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking some of the brighter red, like the Blood Angels red, and going over selectively areas that are facing up to try and catch the light. I'm doing some edge highlighting and where I think necessary, just reinforcing the airbrushing that I had done 
across different armor panels. Primarily focusing on the edge highlighting here. So the idea is you load your brush, not too much, and you hold your brush so that the side of the bristles is what's doing the work. There are occasions where you're not going to be able to do that, in which case you're going to treat the pen like a fine, sorry, treat the brush like a fine liner. Um, and just work your way across the edges very carefully, preferably in a dragging motion down towards you rather than moving up. And you can see that I went back and painted the Aquila on the shoulder pad again gold. This was when I realized that it was supposed to be gold, not, not silver. Just going around with any silver paint. It doesn't need to be anything specific. Um, just to pick out the areas that I want to be uh, metallic. And you can also see that I've painted the gun black as a base uh, rather than the keeping the red that was on there. Moving on to the finer details such as the straps, the leather straps and the pouches. Picking out little details like the skulls. purity seals. I think I'm doing all of these in the same colour. Um, the, the, the way in which you treat the shading and the highlights will actually determine the overall look and whether or not it appears to be the same material. careful not to get this onto the black. Keep everything separate. Steady hand is quite important at this stage. Right now going over with our Graz Earth Shade to shade the work that we've just done. Take this all over everything that I've painted. Oh. And then going with Nuln Oil over all of the metallics. Try not to let it settle and pool. Here's the head attached, that I painted separately. You could do this any manner of uh, manner of ways, manner of colours. I tend to go for a green screen. Sometimes I do blue. And in fact, in the vehicle that I'll be painting that came in the, the battle starter set, sorry, I forget what the name of the, of the tank was, um, I do in fact put a blue screen in there as well as a green one. So the idea is we're trying to shade the screen in such a way that it looks like it's a, it's a backlit like LED. And then I will use the fine point of the brush to emphasize what could be text over the top using a brighter and brighter green. I even end up using the technical paint Tesseract Glow. There it is. Just trying to make it pop off the screen. And then I'll do some wiggly lines that effectively, be, effectively would be text. Okay, you mustn't forget the helmet on the back. I'm doing this the same way that I would any other Space Marine helmet. Picking out the dark areas so that I can put some silver on. Shading it in the same way as I have the armor with Nuln Oil. Just going back out onto the, um, the bolter, or the assault rifle. Sorry, I'm not entirely sure which weapon it is. Picking out some highlights using the uniform gray that I was using earlier. Picking out the teardrop on the Aquila on the shoulder pad with um, increasingly brighter reds. 
I was going to treat it like a jewel, but decided not to in the end, and I'm just doing it as a highlighted um, piece of armour, effectively. Picking out some of the buttons on the, on the keyboard, I guess it is. Right, transfers. So I go into this in a bit more depth on the vehicle. Um, the vehicle was the, or the tank was the first thing that I actually painted out of this set. But um, I'm starting with the Space Marine video that I'm releasing, um, so that because it's easier for um, the client to be able to crack on with the rest of his models. Now I'm using Microset. Um, you can use Microsol as well, a combination of the two, but if you actually read Microset, everything you needed it to do in order to help soften and apply the transfers is, uh, it says it can do. So the idea is you wet the transfer, the what that you want, you put a bit of the micro uh, set on the location. Now I did put a gloss varnish down, this helps move things around, smooth the area over. Uh, put some micro uh, set on there, place it very gently on top and then what you do is you get a, uh, a piece of tissue paper, preferably kitchen roll rather than toilet paper because then it won't leave fibres behind and you press it down and remove the uh, excess water and any air. Then what I tend to do is I go over the top with a gloss varnish just to help seal the whole thing in. Now the issue is um, I was supposed to go over the top with a matte varnish and I completely forgot. So um, right at the very end you end up seeing a bit of a shine on the shoulder pads. Um, but I would just say to uh, the client that if he wants to add some matte varnish on then it's not going to be a, a big deal to, to do so. Just using a bit of brown wash just to take the uh, brightness down um, of that white skull. I don't want it looking that bright. Um, right, moving on to the base very quick and simple putting a dark brown and what we're doing is we we did a wet brush initially with a dark brown and then we're gradually moving further and further up through the color spectrum covering fewer you know, covering a smaller and smaller area and eventually just touching up on edge highlights using the dry brush method Um, I'll put a link above into the uh, I'll put a link above to the tutorial that I did for dry brushing. That will help you out a lot. Okay, putting a brown wash onto the floor. The reason why I'm doing that is to give it a bit more definition from the large stones. So this gives the impression that the it's all part of the same environment, ties it all together nicely, but doesn't make it look like it's all actually one piece of rock, that so there is some difference there. Don't forget to do the rims. Um, I think the rims I've done for all of the Blood Marines, Blood Angels so far are um, black. So this is what, what I've stuck with. I think you can you can do it different colours, it's not a problem, but it just looks neater if you do the rims. So don't forget to do that. No, no matter what colour you choose, don't forget to do that. Right, now deciding on a pose. I'd pretty much already done that before I put the marine on. You can see an aggressor in the background there. Um, I did all the bases at the same time to, to save time. Um, we're going to get some tufts. It's grass tufts from Army Painter. Put a bit of PVA on there, and the reason why I'm doing that is because the stickiness of the base on this uneven surface doesn't always hold. Here's the finished result. Uh, a couple of photos, and I got a 360 uh, rotation view as well that's coming up from, uh, that was a Christmas present from someone. That was Mike, thanks Mike. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I know it was very fast and ready, and uh, you know, I hope you picked up something from it, and I'll, um, yeah. See you in the next one. Bye.